Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to start a new project on gas works. Kit bashing a gas works for the module and for any, uh, any model railroad in North America and the UK and even in Western Europe because these things were just everywhere uh, all over the industrialized world anyway. It seems like they've been relatively forgotten and ignored with respect to model railroading because I personally have never seen a model railroad in any magazine article or in person that included a model of a gas works uh, on, their, uh, on their layout. Now I have seen a couple from the UK because I think uh, they, they lasted a bit longer, the gas works did, uh, in the UK into the 1970s. And so there's a little bit more of a memory among uh, those in the UK than those here in the US. So first I want to go back and, and tell you a little bit about gas works, why they make great models for model railroads, and then we'll start on kit bashing a gas works for your model railroad. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click on. Okay, so I want to start with a little bit of a history lesson about what a gas works was. And basically, these are something that came into use uh, at the very end of the 1790s. There were some experimentation being done with the uh, a process where you heat coal to about 1100 degrees centigrade inside of a closed oven. And when you do that, it uh, tends to burn off or volatilize all of the gases and, and other easily volatilized compounds in coal and that can be collected and used because it produces gases such as hydrogen gas and methane and related gases which can you know be used as fuels. It produces a lot of other nasty stuff. Uh, it generates a lot of tar uh, but uh, and, and also ammonia. Uh, hydrogen cyanide is created, which is deadly, and it also produces a lot of hydrogen sulfide, which, you know, creates a nice rotten egg smell that, uh, that people don't like to smell. So these things were usually located on the outskirts of a town somewhere, where, and, and uh, obviously downwind from any population centers. Um, as far as general use goes, the earliest dates that I've seen for any commercial work was in the early 1800s, about 1805 in England, they started uh, building some of these uh, commercial gas works. And initially they were used to produce the gases for lighting, particularly street lights in, in towns and cities. And I think that probably one of the first commercial ones was uh, for London. And throughout much of the 1800s, that's what the gas was used for, was for lighting uh, homes and for lighting streets. But then towards the end of the century, as electrical lighting became uh, readily available in many of these areas, uh, people started using electric lights instead of gas. And so the demand for gas dropped. And at that point, the gas uh, company started, uh, started promoting their product for use for heating and for cooking. And that use lasted, oh, well, up into the 1950s here in the United States. And in the UK, it lasted up until about 1970 when the North Sea gas field started uh, producing uh, large amounts of gas that were uh, uh, connected into the national network. And that rapidly spelled the demise of gas works in the UK. So look up the, the term gas works using Google or any other search uh, engine on your uh, on your computer and then add in your name the uh, name of the town that you live in or a town uh, on the model railroad that you model and I guarantee you you're going to come up with probably a website that will give you some information and details on the gas works in that community. I did it for here in Asheville and sure enough up popped the Asheville gas works with information on the history of it here 
in Asheville, North Carolina. And these things were in just about every small city and town and large cities all over the United States, uh, probably in Canada, and uh, I know in the UK and in Western Europe. Um, the neat thing about these uh, structures is they had some very beautiful uh, industrial architecture. You know, it was Victorian era, and so they had this uh, brickwork that was quite uh, commonly very uh, fancy and, you know, had all sorts of fancy details around the windows and the doors and the uh, up around the rafters and the like. So they were very interesting structures, and some of them have actually been uh, renovated and used for apartments and for businesses and things of that nature. So they're still around, and, and you know, if you look it up, you might even be able to find one near you that you can take a look at. Now, the great thing about that is it makes it easy to model them because there are a lot of kits uh, uh, that date back to that type of architecture readily available. And I'll show you one here in a minute that I'm going to be using. Uh, so what did a gas works consist of? Okay. First of all, you would have a railroad track coming into it because they burned a lot of coal or they converted a lot of coal to gas anyway. So that's one of the good, re good things about them from the standpoint of modeling is because they make a great industry for coal on your model railroad all the way up until the late 1950s in the United States and into, in the UK uh, through the 1960s. They were still quite active. So then they also uh, would require certain other products. They used uh, lime in order to remove some of the contaminants. Early on, they used lime to remove the sulfur. Uh, later on, they used iron oxide uh, uh, in uh, strippers or, or uh, scrubbers and the like, filters, uh, to remove the uh, iron, the uh, sulfide gases. Uh, you had hydrogen sulfide and carbon disulfide. And if you pass the gas over iron oxide, then it would combine and, uh, you know, you could recover that sulfur. And then they could sell that sulfur uh, off, uh, that sulfide off, uh, for making sulfuric acid. And the same thing, when the, when the uh, coal was, was gasified, turned into a gas, by heating it in these ovens to 1100 degrees centigrade, and these were called retorts, and uh, the structure that they were located in was called the retort building or the retort. Uh, retort house, things of that nature. Um, so you would have coal that was taken into those buildings and used in the retorts to produce the gas. They used uh, coke or coal to heat that, uh, those ovens up to the you know, required 1100 degrees. And they had to keep this going for about eight hours because it took about eight hours for the process to go to completion. And during that time, they were producing this, all of these fumes, and they would run the, the uh, gas through, uh, first, uh, a set of condensers, and these could be run through water or through air, and that would cause the tar and the ammonia, uh, a large part of it, to uh, condense into a liquid or a tar uh, solid, and then that would be dropped down into a storage pit. And then later on, that pit could be pumped out and pumped into a uh, tank car and sold to uh, companies that uh, were distillers of tar. And they would make creosote and various other things with it. And the same thing goes for the ammonia. The ammonia, uh, it would be dissolved in the water fraction and it would go down into these storage tanks. And later on, that could be pumped out separately into tank cars and sold to companies that wanted to make fertilizer and other uh, things with it. because. Uh, you got other compounds, uh, organic compounds, that would uh, be stripped out at the same time. So there were a number of different uh, processes involved that can be modeled and that provide the opportunity for uh, a loads in, loads out type of operation. In some cases, empties in and loads out. So you can ship coke because one of the byproducts of the, of the, of the process was coke. And the, 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 uh, the, the material, uh, that was left over after uh, the coal was turned into a gas was coke. So after the, after the end of the burn, after eight hours or so, they would open up the, uh, the retort doors and then they would pull out the, uh, pull out the ashes or the leftover of the coke really and uh, dump some water on it to put the flames out and lay it out to dry. And uh, then that could be sold off locally for 
people who used it for heating and for cooking. And it could be put in uh, open cars and shipped out uh, to companies that sold coke uh, throughout the country for other purposes or in other communities. And the same thing goes for the ammonia, as I said, and all the other uh, dangerous chemicals that came along with it. And also, one thing, it's very helpful to get some pictures uh, of, of these various uh, facilities. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you any of those, even though there are, you know, just tons of them available uh, on websites on the internet. Just about all of them that I found were copyright protected. And YouTube takes a dim view of people showing videos and using uh, copyrighted material. So I can't use any of that to show it to you. But if you just go on Google and do a, uh, or open your browser and do a search for gas works, you will just get images of all kinds of these all over the US, all over England, all over Germany and Western Europe. Uh, Australia and, and the like, there are websites that I have viewed uh, that have these. And I will put a couple of, of the ones uh, that I really like and am basing my modeling on, uh, on in the description. So you can go to the description for this video and there will be a uh, website link there for you to copy and use. And then you can take a look at those and get an idea of the, uh, of the layout of these gas works and the different types of scrubbers and filters and condensers uh, that were used. Uh, now another very important component of gas works were what were called uh, the gasometers or the gas holders. And these were basically a big pot uh, that was turned upside down and it floated on a pool of water. So the gas, after it was produced and cleaned up, could be pumped up into this inverted uh, pot, basically, and uh, because it was sitting on water, uh, it would tend to float up. And as it floated up, you know, it would pressurize the gas, and that pressure uh, provided the, the, the pressure for the distribution lines throughout the community. Now, that was the early system. Later on, uh, in later years, they developed uh, other types of um, gas holders that uh, did not require the same pool of water in order to float the, uh, the gas holder uh, tank itself. And both of those uh, types are available as kits and in some cases as already made models. And I'll show you one here. Um, this is one that uh, Hornby uh, sold uh, for a while. It's, I don't think it's in production right now, but I found this one on eBay and it's in pretty good shape. And you can see here, this is the, I think it was an iron uh, uh, structure that formed the pool. And then this was the inverted pan, basically, that sat on top of it and floated. And then it went up and down uh, as the gas was produced. And then it would, well, it went up as the gas was produced. And then it would go down uh, as the gas was being used in the community. Um, and the, the, the tank itself, was uh, kept, you know, in, in proper orientation by these uh, various poles here. And it had rollers set on top of the tank that set into tracks. And that way it would rise up and down perfectly ver uh, horizontally. So these were used, you know, up until what, maybe 1850s, something like that. I think it's when they started coming in with the newer kinds. But, you know, on a lot of the small uh, town type gas works, they continued to use a lot of the early types of facilities long after the larger cities started implementing the more efficient measures. Now, as I said, uh, it's easy to model these, but I have uh, uh, very rarely seen these uh, modeled anywhere, and particularly in the United States. Now, I know that Walther's for a while did offer a gas works kit. And the fact that it's not in production any longer might point to the, to, uh, the uh, unpopularity uh, and the lack of awareness by model railroaders of these as a great, um, as a great uh, industry for your model railroad. And in that case, they used a, uh, a kit, it's called Northern Power and Light originally. And uh, so they used that as the retort building. And then they had one of the more modern uh, gas holders uh, along with it and some vertical tanks that were used for the condensers and strippers and filters and, and that kind of stuff. 
Uh, but like I said, that's no longer available, but you will see photographs of that uh, if you do a search for Gasworks, and it will give you some ideas of how you can kit bash one. Because the individual gas holder and Northern Power and Light and the, the vertical tanks, they're all readily available uh, through Walther's anyway. So you can go ahead and kit bash one. So that gives you an idea of some of the history of Gasworks in the time period. I mean, they were around for 200 years, uh, almost. So they cover a lot of different eras. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's easy to model them, really, if you uh, get in and do a little bit of research as to what goes into a Gasworks location. And let me tell you, because nobody knows very much about them, uh, there's very few people that are going to point and say that's wrong. Okay, so you can do whatever you want and come up with something that looks fairly uh, close to the actual prototype. And I doubt you're going to have very many people that are going to criticize your modeling efforts. And you're going to have a, an unusual uh, model on your layout and one that offers uh, some real good operating capabilities. So what I want to do now is bring the camera in here and I'm going to focus in here on the module to the area where I am uh, starting to put together and kit bash uh, some kits that uh, I think will make, will make a fairly good representation of a gas works in a small uh, town in England or the United States. So let me go ahead and move the camera in here and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so this is the area that I am developing for uh, my gas works. And what I want to show you first uh, is the kit that I'm using as the basis for this. And it's an older Concorde kit. It's been around for a number of years. Uh, I think it's probably still available. And it's called the Cambria Ironworks. And the thing I like about this, I mean, it's, it's you know, dates from the late 1800s in Cambria, Pennsylvania. There was an ironworks there. And that's, uh, that facility is what this is based on. And you can see it's got multiple buildings. So it, it looks like a facility that was built up over the years because you've got the one main big brick building there in the back and then you have a smaller building that kind of wraps around it and then you've got an even smaller one out front so you've got several roof lines there's all kinds of devices that are provided uh, to go on and appliances to go on the roof and on the side of the buildings so it, it has a lot of very nice details uh, to be used for kit bashing and along with that I have uh, another Concorde kit in the same series and this is the Cambria City Boiler Works. So it provides another building uh, that can be used uh, and, and also various other parts that can be cannibalized and used as part of a kit bash. So let's take a look at what I'm doing here because uh, I'm just getting started. Basically then, I'm going to be using the basic Cambria City Iron Works building uh, as the retort house and the coal storage house in there, as well as some of the other um, uh, facilities that were associated with these because they had pumps to pump the gas out to the, re to the uh, gas holder. And they also had to pump it through the various uh, scrubbers and filters and condensers. And uh, there would be a gas uh, store, a tar storage tank located somewhere out here on the property. And uh, then of course I've got my gas holder here. So these are various uh, uh, components that I'm starting to just put together. And in this case, let me point out that I've used, this is, yes, so this is the basic uh, Cambria City Ironworks. This building here is part of the boiler house uh, complex. These two vertical kits, uh, tanks here, I think these are left over from an interstate uh, fuel company uh, kit uh, that I uh, put together once upon a time and I did not need all of the vertical tanks that were included with it. But Walther sells uh, sets of vertical tanks and horizontal tanks. So you can buy these. Also, I somewhere around here that I'm going to use, I have containing various pieces of pipe work that Walther sells. I think that goes with their natural gas kit or is separate from it. But at any rate, there's, there's, Walther's catalog just has a lot of these uh, various uh, kits that go along with various buildings that they've pulled out and they sell them separately and that you can get. And so you could, and you can probably find this uh, Concord kit on in the Walther's catalog too. I haven't checked to, to make sure it's still available. But the important thing is, you know, it's got, if, if you look close at this, 
it has a lot of this fancy brickwork that I was talking about. So we've got these brick arches, we've got this fancy brickwork here, uh, there's this uh, crenulated brickwork here up under the eaves and the like. So there's a lot of nice little details that hints of a Victorian origin for this stuff. And that's also very true for the main building itself. And I'm going to be doing a lot more cutting. I've started putting this together and I'll, I'll go over that later as to why I do that because there are some things that I do. Uh, I, I usually build the, the basic building first and then do my basic painting and follow that up with more detailed work afterwards and adding windows and doors and the like. And I have specific reasons why I do that and I'll explain that to you in the next video in this, uh, in this series. Also, uh, this particular chimney comes with the kit and is supposed to go there. This one here is part of the uh, uh, city boiler. It's supposed to go, I think, right there. But I decided that I wanted it over here. So I'm going to use it as part of the uh, retort complex. So we actually have two chimneys on the retort, and this will just be one of the buildings that are used for uh, storage or for other uh, operations here in the gas works. And then back over here we have the uh, track that goes into the rear of the, of the uh, gas works. And then coal would be unloaded from the rear uh, directly into the building and would have storage areas there. And there might be some storage right here alongside the track as well. But I, I really don't have room for a lot of that. So I'm going to make the assumption that they had a storage room, maybe this side of the building here was for coal storage. And, uh, or maybe half of the half of the main building was for coal storage and the retorts themselves were located down at this end. So they had it broken up that way. And then the gas was pumped out and run through the various filters and scrubbers here and then ran uh, in pipes that will run behind or under or around the building and go to the, uh, to the uh, gas holder itself. So that's what I'm looking at right now. And uh, in the next uh, uh, portion or the next video uh, on this, I'll go ahead and explain, you know, the modeling that I'm initially doing and, uh, and, and why I go about doing this the way I do, uh, because I know a lot of people prefer, might prefer to paint and uh, the various components uh, of the building first and install the windows and doors before they glue it together. I go about it backwards and I'll tell you why later. There's a, a reason I do that for my madness. So take a look at the websites, get a feeling for what Gasworks are, and hopefully by next time uh, you'll be ready to see how I go about uh, putting these various kits together, kit bashing them to come up with what I feel is going to be a, uh, a, a good representation of a small town Gasworks. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. In the next video, I'll be showing you how I went ahead and started kit bashing uh, the Concor uh, Cambria Ironworks kits uh, into a gas works. And we'll go on from there. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.